All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon as well, since we're recording this on a Sunday afternoon. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So today, I'm connecting up with a, a fun new guest co-host, and we are going to be connecting on a book launch, of all things, because obviously for the regular listeners, we've done that before as well. And uh, also a number, actually, I can actually connect her up to a past co-host because this show will air after another guest co-host I recorded with Lise from recently. So she can catch us up on how uh, sh- they're actually connected as well. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to chat a little bit more about book launching and some bigger messaging because uh, she's got one heck of a background. I mean, first generation Guyanese American author born in Atlantic City. Okay, so shout out to Jersey. I was born there as well. Uh, but she's on the West Coast. She's a West Coaster, L.A. Now, I was a West Coaster for a couple of years when I used to be a wildland firefighter out there. And uh, but she's got one heck of a mixed background. So I, I could sit here and just give a dissertation on her bio. But uh, I mean, let's, we got some yoga history. We got some jujitsu history here, some crowd Maga. I like her style. She's mixing it up. So without further ado, uh, Sherry Sanahi. Sanahi, sorry. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Wow, Scott, thank you. That was a beautiful intro. Thank you for having me. And I just want to give a shout out to Reiko who connected us. Reiko, I know you'll be watching this. Reiko, thank you so much. I'm using your dope panel right now as we speak to record this podcast. Thank you, Reiko and Reiko. She's an awesome. She, I love her energy. And uh, <laughs> how, long, how long have you two known each other? For three years. That was my first friend in Los Angeles. Oh, that's cute. That's fun. Okay. So how did you guys meet then if she's your first friend? Okay, so in chapter 13 of the book, guys, by the way, I just recently published my first book. It's called Burn Bridges Lead to Better Roads. Rayco is actually mentioned in chapter 13, and I'm going to go right ahead and talk about that segue. Yeah, let's jump in. So the first um, time I came over here, I did a three-day road trip. So the first time I came here, it was by car. I did all the driving on my own, and I felt this hot rush. Like there was something under me saying, you don't have a choice. You have to get out of here now. And the timing was just so specific. So I, uh, as I got this road trip covered, I found a queer tea house called Dinong. Dinong has also been an incremental part of my life, life change. That's how I met Reiko. And I had this little thing. I said, queer, a boutique, Pasadena. I was so floored because when I lived in New Jersey, you know, you go to Brooklyn, you go to Manhattan. I thought that I knew what tea was. I'm, oh, loose leaf tea, you go to this place, you get your latte. When I came to Los Angeles, I was floored. So this place, it has ancient pu'er tea, a hundred to a thousand years old. And something just drew my spirit in there. And one day, Reiko was sitting next to me. We're having a cup of tea. We're both minding our business. And then somehow some chit chat started. And... She was saying how she's a composer and she's like, yeah, I'm going to jujitsu, a jujitsu class, Muay Thai class, if you'd like to come. And I said, how strange is that? Because I've been looking for a really good place to train. And that was how we met. But the, the, the beauty of it is that sometimes all you need, people always say, how do I meet really good people? Or how do I, how do I get out of my comfort zone? There's a few different key points to that. One is don't be afraid of speaking to the person next to you. I don't drink. I haven't drank in four years. We'll get into that at a later point. But here we are, broad daylight Sunday, drinking tea together. And it was just, hey, let's train jujitsu together. And let's just see, you know, let's just see what comes of it. To this day, here she is introducing me to you. And she's a very dear friend of mine. So it's just funny how you take the steps to put yourself in the right place. And God will work. He will put you with people who truly are good for your growth and evolution. Yeah, she was. It was funny because uh, actually, it was a dual co-hosting session. It was Rayco and Frank Kilpatrick. So I guess he's on the producing side, or I don't know how that all get. Anyway, so but we uh, the theme of our episode was obviously what they're doing with gratitude and meditation and their videos. So that was it was a fun show. But he ended up jumping off, so her, she and I got to hang a little bit longer. And it, again, there was just a vibe and energy, a great connection, and, and then obviously uh, towards the end of the show, she brought you up, and she's like, "Oh man, you know what?" She's like, wait, are you okay if I introduce you to other people? I'm like, yeah, sure. If you can think somebody's going to be, you know, fit my audience. And again, we're here to fuel people's health, business, and lifestyle and balance those. So she's like, oh, I got a girl. <laughs> so that oh, was, she, she was all, you were the first person she brought up. So. You know what it is? It's probably the author connection. Cause you also just wrote your first, you, you understand. I think there's a, with you and I, the, we understand the pain of what it took to write a book. So I think that. <laughs> 
But the, uh, your book, when you mentioned it, it probably just dropped into our head that we would probably click on the show together. Yeah, you know, once you've been podcasting for over five years like me and you've had, I've had scientists, I've had uh, other authors, book editors, you name it on the show. And then all of a sudden it's like, it's like putting in the reps in the gym or going to a dojo and putting in the reps in training. I studied martial arts when I was younger as well. And it's just putting in the reps, putting in the reps. You're hearing things, you're hearing things. And you can consider real life coaching, whatever you want to call it. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. I, I could write a book. You know, I'm, I'm tired of telling my story over and over again. Why don't I just put it in writing, put it in print, uh, soon to be soon to be audio book, put it digitally. And let's have some fun. And granted, when you when that flips in your head, I'm sure you can agree. It seems easier after that until you really start putting in those reps. And then it's like, oh, man, OK, I've got a journey ahead of me. <laughs> the book ended up being a little bit more involved than I realized. So uh, I don't know. What would you say about yours? So you felt the same when you when you first started. Uh, you weren't realizing what you were getting into. Is that uh, from here? Oh yeah, it's like I know what I, I thought I knew what I was getting myself into. You don't know until you open that door, and then you, for example, like it's like when the door opens, then it's like oh. poof, the the flood of energy comes in, and then you're inspired, you're motivated, right? But then I'm realizing, oh man, like once you start, you can't stop. I mean, that's that's how I'm wired. Like I'm all in. I, I mean, that's like that's why there's fire in my logo, not because I'm a former firefighter, but when I commit to something, it's all in. And then I, I beat myself up. I am my own worst self-critic. So it's, 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 a, it's a blessing and also a detriment. <laughs> you know, I, I took the gift of being all or nothing to, I said, you know what? It's not a bad trait. It's not, some people are like, oh, you gotta be more gray or, oh, you're too black and white. It's, it, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, all these different <laughs> things. But some people you have, there's a certain wiring for a reason. And that's totally cool. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna, instead of feeling bad about it or like I'm too much or I'm too this, I'm gonna use that and make it my greatest gift ever. Yep. And, and because of that, I couldn't stop. And so my, my whole thing is that I wanna tell people is, if, if, if you're not, if you're gray with an endeavor like this, like also guys, I do do book coaching and I also do ghostwriting, but if you want me to help you coach and write the book, I can help you, but I'm going to let you know right now, you have to be all in chips, everything. This is, it's, it's, I'm writing this, but everybody would ask me, oh, so what do you, oh, oh, I'm an author. I'm writing a book. Let's say I'm typing away and somebody's trying to get my attention. Like, listen, I'm so sorry. I'm, I can't. Somebody says, Hey, do you want to go out? No, I'm so sorry. I can't. Like, this was like my, like, my my partner like this oh i mean this was like it's it's such a commitment like you can't there's it, nothing it, else i don't have yeah. kids but it's like my child right it's like well we we don't have kids but it's like my projects become my little babies it's like all right yeah. you know you got to give it 110 percent. you got to be focused on it and then you know from time to time you could take it take a, a swing back out right you're not closing the door but sometimes you got to get that creative break but then it's all back in again, over and over again. And it's funny for me, like you said, once you're in, you're in. And it's like, I, it's funny because your book is called Burn Bridges Lead to Better Roads, right? Yes. So a survivor's method to risk-taking through radical change. Well, writing a book involves some radical change. Like you have I, to realize that there's certain friendships and there's certain connections in your life that when I became an entrepreneur, I had to close some, I had to burn some bridges. I don't, and like, I didn't burn them to the ground. Like, I'm not saying you're, you're evil and I don't want you in my life anymore. I just started distancing myself. It's like, you know what? I have bridge A, bridge B, bridge A, you're not serving me anymore. I'm going to make a turn and go to bridge B. So I don't necessarily burn them to the ground. There are a few, few in my life that I have because they're just a life sucking energy, right? So there's sometimes yeah. you do have that. And that's part of your story too. But yeah, to write a book, you got to close a lot of other distractions out in your life to really commit to that. And I know a lot of people who have families and have kids, and they're also great authors too. That blows my mind. I'm like, man, how do you parent and raise children, write the book, run your company? It's impressive. Like people say, how'd you do it? And I was like, dude, I got, I got nothing on you, man. Like you, also you're adding in other human beings that you're taking care of. That's another level. So I feel like I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I, I committed like you. It's like, yeah, it's a lot of energy. You got to put a lot of energy into it. So now here's my question. Did you financially also dive in? Because that was me. I, I, I joined like an author's group, a mastermind, and I'd probably drop like three grand on that. And I was like, yeah, I was an idiot. So <laughs> okay, I'll go through my 
my tools that I use. So I have a MacBook Pro from, I think it was 2008. I got, I don't know how, I don't know how, cause like now they have like the, you know, you, you do the touch screen on the keyboard. Oh yeah, I said, yeah. I, I hope this thing doesn't, I, I, I was very fortunate because I, that thing could have broken down at any moment, but it was just, I opened up pages and I just started typing away, typing away. And I didn't mean for this to be a big production, but I learned something about myself in the process because clearly I'm a little, little bit of a perfectionist. We'll get into that in a second. I didn't realize it about myself either because as you, you probably see from my content, I'm not a, I do like to have fun. I like to laugh. Sure. You know, life can't be serious, but I think in some endeavors like that are very, uh, are a big deal to me. Um, I can be a bit of a perfectionist. So bit by bit by bit, I'm like, wait a second, does this need an ISBN and blah, 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 blah. But I just kind of threw myself in there. And then I found on Fiverr, that's how I found myself publishing in person. And mm -hmm. he, he presented himself very well. And that's how his name is Phoenix Marcone. So if you got, you know, so that, that's the name, that's the person that I worked with. And uh, Marcone um, Press. Yes. It, it turned into a bigger production. He's like, Oh, let me, let me see your title. That's where the drama started to happen. Cause I didn't really have anybody with me on this, but him. And he said, no, I got to push you. We got to, we got to go deeper. We got to go deeper. I'm like, damn, how much more, what do you, what, do, what, yeah. what, what, what am I going to do? But it really made me dive deeper than what I thought I was diving. And then it was, let me see the cover. No, we could do better. Than, and it was just push, 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 push. Like kind of like training. That, yeah. that was, so once we got that drama out of the way, um, then it was just the editing. But the way that I, when people are reading the book, you have to understand, I read that out loud. Like if I found a mistake and people would see me live, you know, in my home, I read it out loud. If I found a mistake, I'm like, nope, we got to do it again. Nope, we got. So it was, it was a situation. So between the editing, between the cover, I did pretty good. I want to say maybe around maybe fifteen hundred, twenty something like that. Yeah. But then they're also paying. Oh, I don't know. Let me have somebody proofread this in in India. Let me have somebody. The first. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I didn't stop spending. Let's be real. <laughs> I was like, that three grand was basically like that, that like for me, because I dropped that much money on it and the wife wasn't happy about it uh, once she found out, but, uh, <laughs> but for me, I was like, okay, now I have to do it. Right. Because I spent the money and I will say there was one value out of it. Uh, we, I end up creating a accountability partner with another new author in that group. And then it's funny because he and I both didn't follow any of the guidelines in this self-publishing thing that we were in. Uh, even though we were both self-publishing on Amazon. And I ended up then a woman who had out of my podcast multiple times. I've been on her show. Um, she, she helps other, uh, basically she helps people get into the entrepreneurial space that uh, live with lifelong illnesses and diseases and everything else. People who feel like they can't create something. And then like her, her business is called sick biz. Right. So that was like, dude, she's so inspirational. And I knew she edited books and she never entered my brain. And then after I started stumbling through this and then I, I was catching up with her over social media and she goes, how's the, she's like, how's the book? She's like, by the way, what's up? She's like, you didn't call your girl. <laughs> and I said, yeah, oh. I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm in this group. And she's like, are you kidding me? She's like, you spent that much to go join a mastermind. She's like, I would have done everything for that. <laughs> and I said, oh crap. <laughs> and so sure enough, I ended up hiring her. And she got me to the finish line. She pushed me like your guy did. You know, she she did the editing. She found me a digital editor. She found me the ISBN stuff. She walked me through everything. When you find the oh. right partner, like you just said, Mark on, uh, it's it's a whole different level. It's a whole different level. So it's like levels and levels and levels. Yeah. And then they that title. It's almost like boom. Like it, even though it was so hard to come up with. And it was, it, it says a message in and of itself. And look, if I'm only in your life in passing, whether how long I'm in your life, I said my message, I said my advice to you, I gave my love to you in the best way I can, I could do as a human, right? Because as humans, you know, it's a whole, it, we're, look, we're flesh. So it's, it's difficult. Um, there's, humans tend to love conditionally. And I think that that was the best way I could give of myself in the purest way. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And actually, real quick, yeah. since we're, I know you're streaming this live over your Instagram feed. So for the people in the Facebook world, let me screen share from one of the book sites here. Uh, there, There's the book, Burn Bridges Lead yeah. to Better Roads, and um, 344 pages. Oh, yeah, you did just do it in June. Okay. So, Ooh. yeah. 
And obviously, and you have the Kindle on Amazon as well. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So, but again, it's, this is, it's more than just writing a book, right? You've got one hell of a backstory. You've got one hell of a diverse history. I mean, I love the thing, like you're comprised of six different races. So one thing I love about this country is that we are truly a melting pot, right? Well, we're struggling in these days, but we don't talk about politics on this show. So I don't want to get into it, but it's like, I love what the country was born on, right? Like I'm Irish American by bloodline. I mean, my, my bloodline built the railroads in this country, right? Like all this infrastructure, right? It's like, there's a lot of history here and you're a great example of that. I mean, we got, you got East Indian, African, Portuguese, European, Chinese. I was like, okay, she's, she's, she's got one hell of a bloodline. (laughs) You've been around the block, girl. Your family's got a lot of diverse history. That is so true. Now, and also what's interesting to go in a little bit further, yeah. uh, Diwali just passed, that's a Hindu festival. So my father was of Hindu lineage and I grew up with the, fe- I grew up, you know, he, would, that's, he was a great teacher of that, you know, showing like the festival of lights and lighting uh, the candles all over the house. But then my mother was of Episcopalian background. So I yeah. also would go to church. So it's very, so growing, coming into this world, I was able to see the beauty. Like I was never, not, not going to speak too much of religion, but um I just, I was always very diverse. So even sure. to go into that route, it, it, it's quite a journey. Yeah. So I, I like to cut right to the meat or meat and potatoes, or however you want to say it, right? The, 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 yeah. the, core of the core of the book. What was the thing that flipped your trigger? Like when, and you're like, the book is in, it's all like, what was that moment? What was the, you know, and it's okay if there's a little bit of a backstory to get you to that point. But I mean, so I want to hit that because- that's the, I'm, I'm a fired up person, right? So I love, I want to find that spark, right? And then what creates that wildfire? Because like you're in a California, so you know what wildfires are, and that's what I used to fight. But it's like, I tell people all the time, like you don't put a wildfire out. You surround it, you get around it, and you, you, try and, you try and control it and mitigate it. You cannot extinguish a wildfire. It has to burn itself out. It has to go through its own journey. That's what I learned a decade ago. <laughs> so, but what was your spark? What was, before it just lit it up for you? Well, in, very, in, in essence, the thing that's coming to me that is trauma into triumph. Okay. So the element of fire, burning bridges. People may think, oh, she sounds terrible with cutting off people. No, 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 no. Uh, burning bridges is transformational, coal into a diamond. You need the, the element of fire to purify the coal into a diamond. So there was something in me that said, I don't have a choice. I have to write this. But people understand there's something in you, I guess, as an entrepreneur or, or a writer, where it's like, oh, if I don't do this, because listen, I might, you know, there's also the element of if today was your last day on earth, what would you want to be remembered for? And at the end of the day, if I touch lives, you know, somebody had my book in their hand, they're like, oh my, like, I'm, I might, I mean, I might even get emotional, but woo. That's a good thing, right? Of, yeah. um, at least, you know, <laughs> I love at it. Least, at least I was able to give up my love in that way. Yeah. Because. I've gone through so much, yeah. you know, and it was like, I have to do this. I have to do this. I don't know who this is for, but I have to do this. And that was that feeling of, you know what? Forget the trauma. I am an author. Yep. I'm an author. I don't care. Like I can shine and I can, I can, you know, inspire others to shine and be the best version of themselves. I don't care what you went through. And the thing is, I see beyond the surface. I see the reality of people. And I know that because every time the canary is drawn to me, I understand what's really going on. So it's like, listen, if I can give you a service and say, listen, you don't have to stick in this. We look, you, look I have the Amazon, the book is on for free. You can, you can download it for free. Sure. You can buy a book if you want to support me. I don't care, but this is my service. This is my truth and I want to set you free. And it's setting myself free and setting others free because if one person, if, if we're all suffering, no, everybody's going to suffer. We're all connected. You know, it's funny. It's, I love it. I love the energy because it's it actually get my hair raising up on my arm because I, I had some of that same click. Right. And then it takes good people that are close to you to help that fire burn brighter. Right. So this, I, I'm a true believer in the, uh, the age old quote, you know, you're the, you're the product or you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Right. So classic, amazing quote. And it's okay. Those five inner circles, or maybe it's seven for you or whatever, maybe it's three, but that may shift throughout life as you're going through new chapters and such. So when I started getting into the book thing, I, I did pull out a little bit. I backed off a little. And then my editor, you know, shout out to Hillary. She's like, Scott, you have, a, you have an amazing story. She's like, I've, I've edited and ghostwritten 
countless books. I was like, okay. And she's like, you have such a unique story, just like you, you have such a unique story share. So she's like, how dare you back off, not get your message out there. She's like, you're the only one getting in your own way. She's like, you've already spent the money. You've already committed the time. Like I actually wrote the whole book. I told you all yesterday, I literally voice transcribed the whole book because I don't like writing. So while I was traveling, I'm transcribing it over an app. You know, I figured out 15 to 20 minutes at a pop, I can get over a thousand you know, words into a chapter and just rip them out. And then you know, I started losing time on editing and then you could talk about that too. Right. But, and then she's just like, it took me a year to get through the editing process a year. And I wanted this book out two years ago. And she's oh. like, Scott, she's like, didn't you yourself tell me what if you inspired one person with that book? Like you just got all emotional, right? Like my hair stands up my arm and I think with her. She's like, she said, you said you don't care about making money. She's like, authors don't make money on selling books. I'm like, correct. That's why I'm de I dedicated mine to charity. So she's like, okay. So she's like, so you're also trying to raise money for the foundation that you created. She's like, you're trying to inspire other people. You're trying to motivate people to transform, you know, like you did. She's like, so finish the damn book. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. She's like, seriously, you're the only one holding yourself back. And she's like, you're the one who, who fires up so many other people, everything else you do. And she's like, you're, you're doing it to yourself. She's like, how dare you hold that book back from those people that you're hoping to get through? To? And I was like, boom, done. And then the fire was lit. That was my switch. And we were off to the races to get this thing, get it, get it launched. So I, that's why I love you, how you're getting all emotional because it, it, it hits you deep. You know, it's like, Ooh, I could, I could help somebody. I, I could inspire somebody. Um, I mean, especially here in 2021, right? There's so many people not happy with their lives, not happy with their jobs, even more than ever. Um, there's too much chemical influence and I'm referencing pharmaceuticals, drugs and depression. Mm -hmm. And it's like, life is what we make of it. We can have an amazing, motivational, inspiring life. And sometimes we do have to go through a little bit of shit to get there, right? But it takes people like us putting that positive word out there. So, and that's what I love what you're doing with what you speak and your energy. And I, I went back through your social media feed. I love your Instagram. And, uh, it's, and, and that's, that's you, you're putting in the reps, you're being transparent. That's something else that came out of this process was I always thought I was transparent. I'd love you to talk about that. But, um, and I talk about this in the book too, right? Embracing vulnerability, getting real with yourself, getting true and transparent to ensure that you, the right people see your approachability then. Because you're real. What, what are your thoughts on that? How do you want to expand on that? Well, from the outside looking in, or I'm very much the same. I like real. I like really because I've been through so much in my life. So what I, I like to hear those stories of like rags to riches. Or so for me as a viewer, I also know what would make people tick because I, how could you, how can I put this? I myself, when I'm viewing things, I don't want BS. I don't want fluff. I want something that it, it, it's with music, it's with movies. Like I want something real, passionate. Like whoa, that was so heavy. That was whoa. Like you can't, you can't fake that. So it's feeling and see how I just because I really felt some type of way to to write the book. So I think that it's. I wish more people could see it's okay to be transparent. It's okay. Who cares what people think? Because listen, there's seven million people in the world, and there's going to be somebody that's going to love, eat, live, and breathe your authenticity. And then once I've seen that, you know, from like maybe a viewer's perspective, and I said, if this is what I love so much, I have to be like this. I don't have a choice yeah. or else I'm going to be in some, some little corner somewhere. And nobody's going to ever understand what's really going on. And so that's why I fearlessly show myself every day, like whether it's me, you know, showing tears, showing laughter, showing, you know, me dancing, you know, like a crazy person, but you know, at least at the end of the day, I'm trying to, we don't live in some box like you know like there's so many different realms of human human emotion and it's sad to just stick it one one little plateau that's like how do you, i mean you you would know because you're an entrepreneur like you know with, like in terms of the money coming in and things and the businesses and things like that but to stick it a plateau nobody wants that you want to break through those ceilings i mean financially relationships uh creative projects who wants to stick like this autopilot is not, I, I, that's a word that comes to my head right now as you're saying this, right? Life is not about being on autopilot, right? Some people like the so-called easy street. Um, 
Mark, being become an entrepreneur, right? I wasn't always an entrepreneur. I was a W-2 corporate monkey before firefighting years ago. I, I got off the easy street, right? My friends, my friends I, I, was, I went back to school on nights and weekends. I talk about this in the book. To finish my degree, I was the first person in my family to have a degree. I did this as an adult student in my late 20s. Mm-hmm. And then, so now I have this great resume. I was making great money. I finally have the degree to back it up. And then I gave it all up to go be a wild and firefighter and make nowhere near that <laughs> as a government monkey. Uh, but because I was like, what if serving in public service was my path, right? How dare I close that door? And why not do it while I'm young? Even though I was like 30, 31, I was considered by the way, the old guy on the group, on the crew. Like <laughs> I was like, okay, most guys are like 18 to 24. They're, they're coming in just like the military, but it, it was a great transformational experience. And if, and how dare I hold that back for myself, right? And it was scary. It was risky. It was like, oh my God, like what if I could die, right? It was actually, it's one of the top three or top five, one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. I didn't know that. <laughs> I found that out later, <laughs> right? Ooh. So it's like, dude, you have to take risks and you cannot be on autopilot. And so that's where I agree with you on that. I mean, actually something in, in your book bio, I really like off of the Amazon page was, um, and part of that risk-taking is the emotional balance of not necessarily trying to understand what you and I are saying or how we try and connect to other people, but I love this word that you threw in here, empathizing. So the statement I'm referencing here is you have empathizing with what is misunderstood is vital to bringing these hidden elements to the surface to heal and demystify what separates us as a species. I love that little yes. statement. Yes, that was great. I love that because empathy, because I, I have my professionally, I, I do a lot of sales and marketing. Like that's my, that's my business, right? That was my experience before firefighting. And one of the biggest things I teach people in sales is like, listen, every single person is a salesperson. When you lie yes. to your, when you lie to yourself, you're selling yourself on something. When you lie to your family, your parents, your whatever, you're selling them on something. It's a lie, but you're selling. So it's like, and sure. I tell people, well, you want to get, once you're at that upper echelon of sales professionalism, you're like, especially marketing and connecting to people, the connecting is not not saying, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It is pausing and hearing them and hearing you, like your emotion, your energy, and then trying to understand it. That's empathy. That's real connection. Not, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, no. Oh, you know what? I can, I can try to understand what you're going through. Tell me more. That shows me that you're hearing me, right? You're trying to empathize. You're trying to connect. I love that word. I'm glad you mentioned that in, in, your, in your bio for the book. So- it really connected to me. It really connected to me. So, because here's the thing: going back to the to, to, to the root core, uh, when you realize that we're all our, we all have hearts, we all have brains. So, where did all this mess and nonsense come in from? Like, oh, this person's a different culture, so they don't understand, or oh, this person drives a Ferrari, so I can't just say hello and, and just honestly say, "Hey, congratulations! How did you do it?" Which I have done in real life. I do speak about that in the book. Just getting over the fear and realizing. We're not all that different. And I feel like once I got out of my comfort zone was constant. I used to, I, I do ride share driving as well. I still do it now, but this was also more prominent um, before the pandemic. But even so you start speaking, you start speaking and all of a sudden there's some common denominator between the two of you, but people stop right there. They don't, they don't want to look into the box. They don't want to take the time. And if you could just sit there and take the time and realize this is somebody's daughter, this is somebody's sister, this is somebody's mother, this is, oh, oh my, I'm speaking, oh gosh, I, I picked up this one girl and she was speaking, 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 and she said, yeah, my, my unfortunately, the love of my life, her, her boyfriend, he had died. And I, I said, I, I can't relate to that, a partner then, but I'm so sorry, but my father passed in 2012. It's never really the same, but from speaking, speaking, I could have just been quiet. Something said, no, talk to this girl, see what's really going on. And the more death, I speak about that in the book. My father passed at 55. Um, there's a, there's, it never really leaves you. I feel like I'm now coming into myself again as a person, but uh, again, bringing it back to like, you don't know, maybe somebody went through the same thing you went through and just needs to see that they're not alone, that they're not an island. Yeah, we as human beings need to remind each other that, again, we are all able to connect. And it's, I think that's one of the, also that's this past year and a half during the pandemic and everything, I think has hurt us as a species, as mankind even more, because 
we're supposed to be mingling and connecting with people and not just sitting here on webcams like you and I are. And granted, you and I are using technology to a benefit so we can help get your message out there and your book out there to my audience and beyond, right? So we're using technology in a positive way because I can't be there in person to connect with you. So this is a tool. And a lot of people use things like Zoom uh, to get more connected during this transition. Uh, But again, truly pausing and slowing down like you just said there and trying to say, listen, I don't, I can't understand what you're going through, but I can relate. All right. I've lost somebody close to me. Um, we all have, if, I mean, if truly throughout life, you're going to lose people connected to you. Right. So that is yeah. something that people could empathize with and connect on. So if that's what people need to do, not to sit there and just say, Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's it's cold. Right? It's, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't warm me up at all. Um, so Listen, I, I know I, we have a little bit more time here. I know we have some technical difficulties to get going, so I'm trying to give you as much time as I can here. So something else I really wanted to hit on, and again, you're the guest co-host, so you decide if you want to talk about it or not. One other bullet point from your book bio is the term survivor, as specified in the title, is universal. And I know you got a little bit of an answer on that, but really, why did you call that out in one of your hot points for the book? I just I, I saw that one. I'm like, you know what? There's a lot of depth there. So what, what do you want to speak on on that? Well, a few things are coming to me, but uh, so the audience gets it right away. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to give you a very surface fact. So at 12 years old, I was already smoking cigarettes. At 13 years old, I was already binge drinking and like going, hanging out with friends, you know, wow. uh, going into parents' liquor cabinets and let's take this gin, blah, 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 14 years old. Okay, this person ran out of marijuana, so we're going to smoke formaldehyde. First of all, I'm saying all these things. Let me ask you something. If, if why, why is that occurring? Do people ever think and stop to say what's going on? Like what's what's really going on? So what happened to make you first and foremost feel connected to these people? What was the upbringing like? What was you know? And so what happens? Okay, my father was a genius, very very smart guy, somebody that I look up to, could speak to anybody under the sun. And, you know, but in life, we have, we have good, we have, um, there's yin and yang, there's light and dark, and nobody's free from it. So I love him with all of my heart, you know, and he was a great influence in terms of like, you'd always say, share, what, you know, we, we, you know, in terms of career, finances, like he, my wiring is because of that. He would always drill that into me. However, unfortunately, um, with, what happens with the human spirit when they come to this world there's just a lot of heartbreak. There's a lot of upset. And so he did the best he could. And I gave him so much credit, but he suffered from alcoholism, you know, he su- and so I was already born into that. And I'm seeing as a small child what's going on. And I don't understand seven years old, five years old, I'm saying, can you please stop drinking? Yeah. So there's turbulence. That's, you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of turbulence there. And so what happens so that I don't like get the, uh, jump all over the place you because you're seeing all this turbulence going on you're going to when you go to school and you're feeling like okay well this is what's going on in the home am i the only one you're gonna find you're gonna subconsciously attract people who also have that same turbulence going you guys are trying to hold on for dear like how the hell do i get out of this you're probably not going to want to sit and stick inside the house you know what i'm saying and even as I, i feel like he was a big part as to why i got into alternative medicine i think i you try to take him to chiropractic you try to take him to acupuncture you I would break up cigarettes. I'd write letters saying, hey, this is what happens when you smoke. And unfortunately, I couldn't, I think that there's a part of me that I couldn't save him. Yeah. And but yeah. that was as, as a small child, though, that's also not your job. So there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of things I was, I was, unfortunately, he also suffered like, okay, I'm going to just cut this, cut, you know, mental illness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't stand how there's a stigma. So when people would say, oh, so what's going on? I mean, alcoholism, it's not that the person was mentally ill to begin with. When you have the trauma, abuse, whatever's going on that made that human that way, then there's the bipolar, that's, then there's the schizophrenic. I would see episodes, all of a sudden I'm, I'm you know, to myself, and then you hear somebody in the other room speaking, who are they speaking to? So there's a lot of scary stuff that I had to see and deal with. And um, so, so, so that's part one. Part two is then you're, why are you now taking on these habits or these things to cope? And why are you finding these friends? And, you know, it was normal, you know, you're 16 years old, you find a friend. 
okay, let's put a bottle of vodka between the two of us because there's a similarity. Like we understood each other. Like, oh, my mom's like that too, kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, my you, dad, like, great friend. You, you attracted and allowed yourself to connect with people of a similar background, not yes. knowing that you were amplifying that harmful bubble, right? Back to my point earlier, that's the five people you surround yourself with, right? So you were just trying to connect. And since you were already educated around those elements, those were the elements you were drawing towards you, right? I, I love that book, uh, Law of Attraction. Uh, a lot of people yeah. in the very beginning, the first time you read it or watch the documentary, it's kind of woo-woo. <laughs> but I'll tell you, like every year, ever since I read that book, I go back and I re-listen to the audio book again just to see, you know, because obviously there, there's physics integrated into this, into that. It's, it's for a lot of people that you listen to that book, you watch that book, you read the book, whatever. It's not going to connect with everybody the same way. But I notice every single year as I grow throughout life, I get something else going back. Like maybe it's woo or not, or physics or not. I, I, I understand things at a deeper level as we progress. So I just, I'm not sure if you're a big fan of that book or not, but it's, it's, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I see you connecting and drawing those elements in around you. And you didn't know that that was amplifying that, those negative experiences. And until you could break free of that, you are going to be on that the rest of your life. And then unfortunately, how does a person know? Because those people don't really want you to grow. So you, you're not, and then truth is the biggest, uh, so nobody's telling you the truth. Like, listen, like, you know, you, you could be doing better than this or, Hey, like you had this going on for you. What happened? You have all these blind spots that you can't really see. So what there came a point in my life, um, luckily I did, I was introduced to modeling and things like that in New York City. So I remember those amazing experiences of like landing at such a young age. And I always kept that, but then there's drama that comes with that. Then everybody wants to be your friend and for the wrong reasons. And then, oh, come, you know, drink, smoke, whatever the case may be. And you're young, you don't know, you don't have somebody protecting you. So the book in a way is a form of protection. Do not go through what I went through. And, be, and I'm also giving people away how to read through these things, how to see through these smoke screens. Um, then there came a point where the friends that I had, they were, they all started going to rehab. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I, I need a new group. I mean, they, they, as a little kind of like speed up with them, they ended up transforming their lives, but they had to hit that point. So once that was going on, I said, you know what, I uh, pull back, pull back. And then I ended up, I kind of cut off the modeling and I said, okay, I want to focus on something else. Let's go to school. And that's how I got my degree in biology with a focus in alternative medicine. But here's the thing, I wasn't, I don't want to get too, um, my philosophies are more because of what I saw with my father, you know, and, you know, unfortunately the addiction just never stopped. The pills, it went from, a, out, the alcoholism stopped, but then it's Percocet, Xanax, Valium, Oxycontin. And so I'm seeing this and it was just, I was like mortified by it. And I'm like, okay, you don't have to take this wrong because unfortunately, it kills the human spirit and that's what happened to him yeah. and that's what, what he was a big push of me understanding because i'm not a scientist by trade like i mean i i going into a to take a test for biochemistry you know what i mean like studying out like weekends and hours and hours i felt like i was going on a roller coaster before the test like it was so it was so insane to have to understand those things but looking back i'm so grateful that i did but because i truly want to help people in chapter 18, I wrote, I have a disclaimer at the top, but I talk about modalities and supplements that not only help me with the pandemic, but also um, to strengthen my spirit because I did a lot of healing over this pandemic. So there's a lot of different things. And so anybody that crosses my path, look, I can't have guarantees, but I did work in the back end of the food industry with good manufacturing, manufacturing practice, uh, third party testing, which I speak about in the book. That was a godsend as well. That didn't just fall. It, I didn't seek that out. It kind of just came to me. So that's why I'm speaking about these experiences so that I could just help somebody. And it's so much, do you see how this is a lot to get into with somebody? It's, it's, oh, kind yeah. of, it's very common. And so that's my way of shortening and saying, listen, I've seen a lot. I want to help you take it or leave it. And at the end of the day, if they don't want to do the work, they don't want to read the book. I'm already seeing something right there. Okay. I try it and you move on. I, I, I align with you on this because I've throughout my professional career and all the, all the hats I've worn, I've always had health, wellness, and fitness as a part of my life. Uh, no one in my family looks like me. I love my family, uh, but and I was born, we were, I was raised on a farm, and the way I live to this day is that clean, that healthy. But my uh, the rest of my family were no longer in the farming world, like owning a farm, and they're so far from that. And I've interviewed countless scientists and health influencers in the 
again, we can go down a whole road there, right? You know, uh, the, the ketogenic world, the sugar to grains world, whatever you want to talk about. Um, it, I'm a heavy influencer in that and a supporter of that, right? So living an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. But I, again, I spent, I, I taught spinning for six years, right? You have a yoga background, Marshall's. I, I've, I've coached kids in ski racing for 11 years. I've been a CrossFit trainer. I've been around the block in the health and fitness space, but I don't, I don't make that a core part of my brand, but I always make sure, hey, listen, there's a lot I know. There's a lot of acquired thanks to interviewing and talking to so many experts out there in the world. But it's taken me many years, thanks to podcasting, to just slow my roll and say, listen, when you're ready, I'm here for you. You can't force this stuff on people. They have to go through, make their mistakes, keep hitting their head up against the wall sometimes, unfortunately. All you can do is just like you said, listen, I've got some tools. I've got some experiences that I'd be happy to share with you, but yes. I, can't force, I can't force it on you. You have to make that personal commitment in yourself. If you can't do that, because again, like you with biology, when I went back to school, besides studying marketing, I became a geek about psychology. I went deep. I mean, I was actually going to stay in longer and go the PhD route. But then I realized like, listen, I'm already in my thirties. I want to go be a firefighter. I want to try this out. So I just, I paused, I stopped, but I was, I was deep. I, I love science, right? So psychology, just like biology, there's a lot of science there. So I love understanding the mindset, but people have to personally commit on their own or else yeah. it doesn't matter what tools I bring forth, you know, what experiences you share, the training you could give, it's going to fall on deaf ears. They have to commit. And then, then maybe we can help somebody, right? Yes. Yeah. And then with that thing, the one something is coming through to me as, as we're speaking in terms of the commitment, in terms of jumping into something, because it seems like that's a common theme on, on, on the show. I didn't mention this, but I when I did the cross country trip, that was a huge commitment. Oh yeah. Right. And <laughs> yeah, the people I was staying with, you know, we had our time. I'm very grateful, but they decided on a whim, okay, LA isn't for me anymore. I'm gonna go to Vegas. And I said, shoot, and something in my intuition said, no, hold on, don't, don't, it's not meant. So um, to recuperate and just gather my thoughts on what I really wanted to do, I took a month break. I went back home to the East Coast for only a month. And I said, you know, and my agent was calling me. She's saying, oh, hey, you may have this coming in, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what? I don't have a lot of money. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to really be so mad at myself if I don't just jump in and just figure out what LA is about. I took a one-way flight with no place to stay. Nice. That's, That's commitment. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? What are you willing to suffer? And I was willing to, I was, you know, I'd rather suffer. We all have pain, right? Mm -hmm. And I say some choose to suffer for greatness and some people choose to suffer because they feel greatness escapes them. I said, listen, this thing's going to hurt. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what, how I'm going to figure it out, but I would rather suffer this pain rather. And that's where the risk taking is. No risk, no story. Yep. No all in, no story. And I said, and then there was a time where I was gonna, I said, you know, I might as well just go home. But then it got, I was like, I was like, I don't know what it is, I don't know, what, but it was so all or nothing that things just worked. And that's the kind of thinking you have to have for something to truly work. You can't be one foot in, one foot, uh, no, you have to go in. And that's okay. it, done. And from that, you and I are connected. You also can agree with what I'm saying. That's how this is the book here. That's how everything came to fruition when yep. the pandemic. I said, shoot, I'm not, I don't know what it was, but I wasn't meant to go back home. I stayed in Los Angeles throughout the pandemic on my own. And then I was with a friend in chapter two, we speak, somehow she's speaking to me about seven to 10 streams of income. And it just knocked me in the head. I was like, oh my God, I always wanted to write a book. And I just took it. I ran with it. And that, that is pretty much that element in a nutshell. Well, writing the book, and I don't know if you ever thought about this word, because when I start bringing shows towards a close, I ask my, and we're not closing just a second, but the, my guest co-host, I ask you guys to help leave behind some final words. So I want you to think about that because just like writing a book, a word that now is a big part of me, thanks to the years of podcasting. And then now completing the book for me is, you know, what is the, what it, if, if, if we leave the world tomorrow, I, I mean, I, I served. I, I served as a firefighter. Right? I could have died doing that. I mean, it was one of the hardest jobs on the planet. I could have died doing that. I didn't think about it at the time. I was just all in. Uh, but that took me, like, just like you said, committing. Right, the one way. Like, I okay, I quit my career. I I, I had debts. I had I, I sold everything I owned. I, I bought a three thousand dollars Subaru Outback wagon, crammed all my sporting gear in there because I'm a you know rock climber and mountain biker. And I, I took my gear, but gave everything else away and sold everything. And then trekked across the country, like in, my, in a car that I bought for three grand, hoping that it didn't break down, and to go 
<laughs> stay, you know, to go stay at a fire base in Arizona and hope that I get along, along with these 20 other dudes that I'm about to go serve on the side of a mountain when it's burning. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm with you, girl, because it's like, it was scary, but it was exciting. And it's those, that's why I said earlier about auto, get off of autopilot, right? It's, I'm not saying you got to go do what you and I did exponentially immediately, right? It's like, <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like, maybe, maybe you want to go do a marathon one day. Okay. So why don't you go maybe try, try a 5k, <laughs> then maybe a 10k, then maybe a half marathon and you're training your way up to get that marathon in, right? That's what we're talking about. You don't have to go, oh, I'm just going to just drop everything and hop on a plane one-way ticket. Or, hey, I'm going to go buy a cheapo Subaru and hopefully it doesn't break down and I end up in Arizona, right? So there's ways to take these risks. Some are explosive. Some can be that slow burning that you're increasing, right? To get to that diamond one day, you mentioned diamond earlier, right? You you, you got to build the pressure, build the pressure over time. Uh, now, granted, you and I, I could tell we're just like, whoop, all in because <laughs> you need and yeah that, that's why the enthusiasm and the energy with this is so beautiful because we understand there's also this human understanding even though we're through screens right now we're doing the best we can but you know i was having technical difficulties i said nothing's gonna stop me and you're also the same way and that's why we're here right now i know i emailed you back i was like all right i'm, I'm chilling i'm here <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we got, we got to light this up. I mean, we tried yesterday. We went for it today. I was like, we're lighting it up. I was like, I don't care. We're going to get this thing done. So uh, where there's a will, there's a way. So, well, well, listen, I, I, I want to make sure you, you have a, some great way to close the show. Uh, hold on. You got something else real quick? I was going to say too, another thing that's coming to me and turn, okay. So I mentioned a lot of like, in, in short though, the best way I can sum it up a lot of the turbulence I went through and experienced but one thing I could say to everybody watching, one thing that changed my life, when, when my father had passed, uh, I knocked on the door of a martial arts studio and said, hey, do you need any help? It was Krav Maga Lee and Diamond Mixed Martial Arts. And that's when I started taking, I was into the fad work for fun. But then I started seeing how the, like the Muay Thai, the Jiu Jitsu, the Krav Maga. And then there was something in my circuitry that started to see like, oh, we got to train. We got to get, it, it, it almost became a part of my being. Like you got to get this thing going. And then something in that, it will start to cut away like all those old influences and something will start to drop off. Uh, dance was also a beautiful component in my life as well. Just being around people that are confident, everybody's hype, everybody's, you know, you're putting your best foot forward, putting your best face forward. And really it was the training that kind of got me loving to live in Los Angeles because you eat, live and breathe the training. You know, I don't have to be around this old, th these trauma bonds and this way of connection. I like, okay, this all happened. But the training and the mindset to write the book and be able to say, hi, I have a book written. It was actually from physicality yes. and, and the training, like, oh, it, 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 it's a different kind of training, but it's still training. And then um, I can say, listen, you know, I've been through a lot, but hey, I'm an author, you know? So it's still showing something about myself, but it kind of, the, the back end of what people are seeing, intensive physicality. Oh yeah. To be able to get out of my head, get out of my head and just have the confidence. You know what? I'm an author. Don't think too much about it. Just do it. You'll get I, it done. I love your hitting on that because after all these years, obviously the tagline is we feel your health, business and lifestyle, but all these years you already picked up on an earlier mindset has become a big part of it. So if I ever rebranded the show one day, the, the mindset component is huge, but that's why my foundation, I love discussing the importance of you know, health, business, and lifestyle. If you're living unhealthy, your business will fail. If you don't have a balanced lifestyle, your business will fail. Go Flip, flip it around. People worry about making money and, and being successful either in a job or a career or whatever, but it's like, okay, but then it, all of these things have to balance to have an ebb and a flow. But I love what you're hitting on because- I too studied martial arts when I was younger. I was more into Okinawan Japanese based martial arts, but having a sensei like ground me because uh, I was a bit of a high energy kid. <laughs> so, uh, it, and I actually miss it. I, I've actually, for the past two years, I've been still in my free time and I, I literally have a heavy bag out in my gym and my, in my barn. And I'm, I'm like, I, I'm a very big fitness nut and I'm missing the courses and the training and the structure because I got, I took a lot from that. Uh, and I love, that's why I'm glad you hit on that because yes, through physical demands and pushing yourself to new limits, it helps remove some of those distractions. It gets you focused. It gets you capable of doing more than you realize, oh, wow, I can kick over somebody's head or, wow, I can grapple and take somebody down or, wow, something as, as beautiful as a kata, right? You mentioned dance, right? I, I actually loved uh, performing katas at, at martial arts, going through the forms and the flow 
And it's, it's not about the fighting or the kumite. It was just about the art of it. So it, there's that balance of strength, but also beauty. And all of that structure gives you that foundation to know you're capable of doing more. I, I couldn't figure out why. I just I didn't like playing baseball when I was a kid. Didn't like basketball. Tried that stuff. Never got into football. I, it just wasn't my thing. And that's okay. Some people are into that, right? But to you, you found structure, you found training, right? You tra- okay, let's go Krav Maga. Let's get in some martial arts, right? Let's do some jujitsu mix. Like, let's find what's going to click right for you. And that's something that really helped you uh, through your redevelopment. And obviously, are you still training in that today? Well, sometimes I'll do pad work. I do, um, you know, I do pad work from time to time. I'll go hiking. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm kind of moving through a lot of different things, but I, you know, I like to dance. I still dance. Yeah. But, um, but in fun. terms of training for like, see, the thing is, I don't want to, I'm not a fighter. I don't want right. to, I don't train for, to, to fight. That's not, I train the, for the mental stamina mental. Mm-hmm. to get over, to get over the hurdles, you know, to get over, um, even that little bit of like, when we had those difficulties in the beginning, I mean, I had to say, no, 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 no just calm down and like, kind of like talk myself through it and then just get, so any little obstacle, whatever it is, I'm, I'm mentally prepared for that. Yep. That's awesome. I love it. So you could definitely tell you've gained a lot of mental strength from that. Because again, it doesn't matter how much training we have, there's still gonna be these things that are gonna flip, you know, trip the trigger or or set us off. And the only thing different between like you and me now compared to maybe where we were younger is that now we know other things, new skill sets to help us refocus, reground, reset, and not lose ourselves and not spaz out or whatever, whatever term you want to use, right? It's like, okay, it's okay, we got this. Let's work through it. Because that, that's one of those secrets of success. I, I can definitely tell you and I, that's helped us get us towards becoming authors, right? Me, yes. me, become, me becoming a podcaster, getting outside your comfort zone and working through the new struggles that you're allowing into your life. Because that's the other thing. Like writing a book is a, is a, is a new struggle. Uh, you, I watched one of your Instagram things, doing the one-legged bounding uh, upstairs <laughs> at the park, right? Like, okay, not everybody. Someone's going to watch that. They'll be like, oh, I can't do that. Like, wrong. You can do that. You just have to start putting in the reps. You, you got it. You got it. See, yeah. that's the, the thinking right there is that the, you put yourself to show what the human mind is capable of. If I have a brain, you have a brain, your vision, you have God gave you the sight, the vision, the hearing, you know, the, the phone that you're holding. Come on, you, know, you got this thing too. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I can't, I, sometimes, you know, I tried the coaching thing. I, I'm sometimes I'm too direct because I'm like, come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty blunt too. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I'm just like, if you wanted me to be your coach, I'm just going to tell you exactly how it is. And it, 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 there's some tough love coming your way. You don't want me coaching you. <laughs> so, so like, okay, I, I, I could go in and maybe like, you know, the, the, the book coaching, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I'll push myself because I want to see the, the get past the limits, get past the, the small thinking. And I want to encourage people it's not to show off or whatever. It's to show your best self and to say, yeah. look, you know, you gotta feel hype. You gotta feel hype about yourself. And then once people could understand that that's what it really is, they'll say, Oh, I can do this, I can do this too. And then they'll feel hype about themselves and yeah. transfer that energy everywhere they go. That's what it's about. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you something. You can you can steal this one if you like it. So because I spent so much years in the corporate world and then the strategy of firefighting. And now I do strategy and execution with my clients, right? But there's a there's a tagline that started being developed through podcasting. And I said, listen, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever's out there watching this or listening to this, whether it's on your Instagram live right now or the Facebook is, we are all just at a different place on the timeline. Once you realize that, everything gets simpler. It's like, okay, well, so so maybe maybe you're maybe you want that Ferrari. I don't see the point, but anyway, maybe you want that Ferrari. Great, that's just further down the timeline. So you're gonna have a a couple different paths or reps you're gonna put in to get there. Uh, maybe you want to go sure. h- hike a 14,000 foot peak. I love doing those. I didn't know. I wasn't always a 14 year hiker. Got into that when I lived in Colorado while firefighting, right? Okay. I had to start hiking. I had to start training, right? So we're just all at a different place in the timeline and you got to hone the mindset and start putting in the reps and you'll eventually get to where you need to be. If that's the next step on your timeline, it's okay. Like everybody just wants to go from A to Z instantaneously. I'm like, sorry, it's not going to work that way. You just got to take a deep breath ground yourself and then start laying out the roadmap. And to your point, maybe that road might, might have some burned bridges and some refocusing to better roads to get there. And that's, that's yeah. the excitement of life is you don't know where they're going to take you. So yeah, I love your title. So 
Thank you. If you, if, if you, haven't, if you haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> oh, thank you. And, and looking at the firefighter connection too, it's, it's, it's a funny thing how life works. Yeah. You know? Well, listen, I, I want to make sure you could leave behind a final statement because I actually have to get ready for another back-to-back -back show behind us here. So again, I mentioned earlier, like it, you have a lot of energy to share. So is there an all-encompassing message you would like to leave behind for the audience today, like a final legacy message or whatever? But obviously you have a lot of inspiration and a lot of trauma that led to this book. But like now, as you've already put the book out now and you're, and you're growing, you know, what are some final words you'd like to leave behind for everybody? Well, it's, it's it, like we said, it's just one step at a time, realizing that people, oh, she just, they just, uh, everybody's at different timelines. And um, there, it is, regardless of where you were on your journey, it's just, everybody goes through things. See beyond the surface, right? So people see me, too, okay, so you just tapped into it right there. So seeing beyond the surface, understanding that we're all connected, we all have a brain and a heart, we've all been through things. But you don't have to stick there. Turn the trauma, work through it. I gave a lot of tools in the book to work through it, to turn that coal into a diamond. And then, hey, it may, maybe it's not an author. Maybe it's maybe it's a singer. Maybe it's um, your own, a CEO of your own company. Whatever it is, there's so many different dynamics as to how to turn that coal into a diamond. But you just have to keep working. And you can't let hard work scare you. You, you just got to know that it's really, it's not about the level of intelligence. It's about matter of how bad do you want something. How bad do you want to change your life? Like how, you know, and you really have to be sold on that idea. Like if I give up, it's the regret of giving up or what could have been like, if I don't do this work, you know, like I, like I mentioned, I, I stopped drinking for four years and I go, cause clearly this way of life isn't serving me anymore. Mm -hmm. And I said, if I don't do this, if I don't make the sacrifice, what's the other reality going to look like? And what's that, what's that going to make me stuck with if I don't give this up? That's really, you really it, there is a level, level of dramatics with it, but you have to feel. There, I, I wasn't a cold-hearted person writing a book. You, I had to feel a level of discomfort and say, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this way of being. I had to feel to the depths of my being with every fiber of my being. And when, when you don't drink, you're going to feel, and it's not always going to feel nice. You know, especially with my history and things like that. But I was like, you know what? I would rather endure this pain than that kind of pain. That's picking pains. What's your pain point? And awesome. then saying, and, and, and realizing that there's never mistakes. There's just lessons. And to just keep having faith in yourself and know that there's a, there's a greater picture. The details are one thing. Like all the editing that we both had to do. And those are little details. But yep. keep going. Work through the, all that little stuff. To get to the bigger picture who are you helping before you leave this world whose life can you change before you leave this world how you know and how can you show somebody what could really be done maybe they don't have anybody else that can bring that out of them that's Very what it's true. about well said well said yes back to that legacy message right what are we leaving behind well, listen, hang tight. I want to give you a proper go out the air. Ladies and gentlemen i'm going to do one last screen share actually real quick you know what just for fun with the video feed so again the book is Burned Bridges Lead to Better Roads, A Survivor's Method to Risk-Taking Through Radical Change. Okay, so go online, pick your favorite book vendor. If you like the hardback stuff, great. She's got the Kindle on the Amazon as well. Uh, so again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, we're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. We got deep today. We have some great stories being shared. Check her out more. Uh, her, actually, her main site is uh, sherryspeaks.com, so S H A R I. S P E A K S dot com. I'll have all the stuff listed in the show notes like we always do, all of her social media connections. She's got a great following on Instagram. I recommend following there. I made a joke earlier. I was serious. Loved watching her bound up the steps at the park. I love fitness. Ooh. So, again, yeah. thanks for tuning in. And remember, you two can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.